and it's dealing with Matthew chapter 8. And it's a term that maybe you haven't heard before or a title you've never heard before, but I think it has a, a lot of validity when I start thinking about it, start meditating upon it. And that word that I'm going to talk to you about today is called spiritual stagnation. Spiritual stagnation. The most, the most hardest time we can ever have in life is when something goes wrong and we pray and we don't seem to get an answer. People function in church. They function, they function, they function in church. They go to church. They, they have all, all the look of a Christian, but they, they actually their lives are in spiritual stagnation. They're not free. They don't have any peace. They don't have any joy. I will often tell people oftentimes that there are sometimes you go to church and you, you just go. It, 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 becomes, it becomes a duty and not a joy. Spiritual stagnation hits all of us. All of us have been in that position at one point or another where we just get stagnant. Amen. Amen. The more we pray, it seems like more goes wrong. Like the more we try to do right, more things rise up. But we got to, we got to understand how this thing works. It's more than coming to church. It's more than serving and feeding the hungry. It's, it, you can feed the hungry all day and your life could be jacked up. You can feed the naked. Your life's still messed up. You don't have any peace, any joy. Anything that goes wrong, take you down. But this morning, what I want you to do, I want you to listen to what the Holy Spirit has given me because we're here to teach you. Tell your neighbor, you're here to get taught this morning. Too many people go to church looking for a feeling, looking for someone to rouse you. I ain't here to rouse you up. I'm here to give you some information because information is what's going to get you through this life. Information is what's going to strengthen you in a time when things go bad, when death arises, when situations become unexpectedly. Spiritual stagnation. And we read our text out of Matthew chapter 8, and we read from 5 to 13. And this particular centurion, which was a Roman soldier, had a servant. And the servant had the palsy. Palsy is like lupus, like a muscle disorder can't control it. And he said that my servant is sick and in torment. And my question was, why did he call Jesus Christ? Why did he call Jesus? What was, what was, what was his purpose? His purpose of going or calling or looking for Jesus was because his servant was sick. How did he know to call on him? How did he even know to look to him? One thing that I learned in this text of this story is about this, this man that was, that was that would had servants under him. And he says, I got people over me that I have to obey. He says, but when he asked Jesus about his servant being sick, Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And, that's me. Yep. And he said, no. He said, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. He said, but speak the word only. If I, can, if, if, if I can just get you to understand how powerful the word of God is, if I can get you to connect with that word and connect with God, not the preacher, not the pastor, not, not stuff, not material things, none of that. If I can get you to get to a place where it's you and God had this relationship so tight that, that all he had to do was speak his word and you obey it, I'm telling you, you will see some miraculous things happen. You don't need a special apostle. You don't need a special prophet. You don't need a bishop. What you actually need in order to understand how this world works, how churches should operate, is all you really need is the word of God. If I can get you to understand it, like the centurion said, he said, but speak the word only. And he said, my servant shall be healed. And he gives an example. He said, for I'm a man under authority. He said, they, my boss tell me to go, I go. He tell me to do what I do it. He said, I also have servants. I understand the power of the word. I understand the power of following orders. I understand that when you follow the order, when you follow the word, when I speak it, it caused something to happen. Come on, God. Speak, Lord. The problem with the church is they have left the word of God. 
They have followed the mandate of mankind. And people go to church and they still sick, they still, they still face issues. They, they, you can't even get to your pastor half the time. Because I want you to be dependent on God, not the pastor. I want you to be dependent on the word of God. That if the pastor not there, you got the word to get you through. We done made church like Hollywood. And church should never be like Hollywood. Church should be a place where we are sharing the gospel, living the gospel, and experiencing the power of God through healing, deliverance, through prophecy. God still is alive and doing things today. So Centurion said his, 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 he wanted Jesus to come and heal his servant. And the centurion said, but speak the word only. And Jesus said in the 10th verse, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, I have not found what kind of faith? So great faith. He said, you just speak the word, I know my servant shall be healed. If you and I could take God's word and, and, I, and, and difficult moments in life, Difficult moments when you tell people and, they, and you come, you say, hey, look, I'm going to get put out of my apartment and, and I don't have the money to pay rent and, and I, I'm in this crisis and you got three kids or four kids and you're living in this place. You can live in a house. When you are under pressure, when you are in, in the, 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 the jaws of life and if somebody tells you, trust God, believe God, you have to do that because if you don't believe God, listen to me, stagnation, spiritual stagnation is nothing more than unbelief. Come on now. Amen. God can't work in unbelief. Amen. I'm going to give you some examples here in a minute. The centurion says, speak the word only. He believed that if Jesus spoke the word, his servant will be what? Healed. But people, we, we, we're not connecting with the word of God to believe it. We want some preacher to lay hands on us. We want somebody to rub us down in oil, somebody to make us fall on the ground and kick us three times before we get it. You don't need to do none of that. Amen. All you need to do is believe because I'm telling you, situations are going to arise in your family, in your life, on your job, and if you don't believe, nothing can happen. God cannot work outside of faith. Cannot do it. Just because someone states that he or she believes doesn't mean that they believe. <laughs> Belief is not based on a statement out your mouth. Belief is based on doing. It's action. He said, speak the word only. He believed. He said, just speak the word. And when Jesus said, thy servant is healed, when did his servant get healed? His servant got healed when Jesus said he's healed, but it didn't happen until he what? Went. It takes, you got to do something. You just can't sit there on your hands. You just can't sit there hoping that something happens. You got to believe by faith that what the word of God declares, that guess what? It's going to work in your life. But we want to make God do something. We want to make God does it. Just because you say you believe don't mean you believe. Many people in church are at spiritual stagnation. Spiritual stagnation happens very slowly to a lot of people, especially when you face crises and things go wrong, don't go wrong. And guess what? When you've been praying and you've been crying and you've been calling on God and your situation is still the same, it didn't change. You didn't ask God to move. You didn't ask God to do something. I've been there. I experienced. What do you do when you've been praying and nothing manifests? So you start calling people. And you start getting people to get on the prayer line. You get tired, five, six, seven people on the prayer line. You get ten people. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of times you don't need a prayer line. What you need is just to believe God and his word. Because when you start serving God, guess what? Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes waiting on God is painful. Sometimes believing when, when all odds are against you, man, it's painful. Because it works on your emotions. It works on your feelings. When it, it, it works on you. But you can't expect God to move against his word. Somebody say amen. amen. 
what did the centurion believe? He believed that Jesus had the authority over sickness. That's why he went to him. You're not going to go if you don't believe. If you don't believe that God can change your situation, it will never change. Some people wind up in church for years. They go to church for years, years and years and go to church and wind up in spiritual stagnation. Don't grow unhappy trying to find a church that's going to make you jump and shout, make you move and clout. No, what you need to do, you need to just worship God for who he is. I just worship him for who he is. I thank him every day I wake up. I thank him every day for what I have. I thank him every day for food on the table. I thank him every day. I thank him for what I have. I'm learning. And Saturius said, just speak the word only. If we could just get to that point where, Father, I read your word. I know what it says. And, and, and God is speaking every day through his word. Every day God speaks how? Through his word. Because there's going to come crises and situations in your life that you don't have the ability or resources to fix. And if you, if you can get tied into God's word, if you can tie into his word, even when it's painful, if you can tie into his word, even when it don't look like it's manifest enough, you can tie into that word and hold on. I don't care if the whole world fall apart. You stay steadfast in the word of God. Amen. Spiritual stagnation <laughs> prevents us from receiving our requests. Spiritual stagnation. Spiritual stagnation is nothing more than unbelief. God says unbelief was evil. When you don't believe God and his word. I have gone to the hospital and prayed for people and, 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 and lay hands on them, anointing them with oil. And I leave out of there and the person is still the same. How do I get past that? I still, I don't care what I see with my eyes. I believe the word of God. I believe by his stripes I am what? Heal. I believe that. No, listen, nothing that I can see with my eye is going to change that. Why do I say that? Because the Bible says what you can see with the eye is temporary, yeah. but what you cannot see what is eternal. And God's word is what? Eternal. eternal. Right. What's going to keep us is the word of God. What's going to keep your marriage is the word of God. What's going to keep your children is the word of God. But you have to believe. Tell your neighbor, you have to believe. What are the causes of spiritual stagnation? Fear. Fear is a cause. Fear keeps you from moving. Fear keeps you from receiving. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and what kind of mind? Sound. A sound mind. That's the word of God right there. You got it right there. When then why aren't you doing or living a fruitful life and being happy in God Jesus, Jesus Christ? I'm happy. I'm sorry, I'm happy. If you're not happy, I, listen, there's nothing I can do about it. You have to realize my whole life, my marriage, my children, my very existence is based on the word of God and understanding that fear is part of spiritual stagnation that does not change your situation when you fear. The second one is unbelief. Unbelief robs you of the blessings of God. That's, that's a sign of spiritual stagnation. Why do you go to church? It, coming to church this morning, was it a chore? I really don't want to go, but I'm going to go. I really don't want to be there, but I'm going to go there. I'm not going to go there, and I'm not going to worship. I'm not going to praise. I'm just waiting for church to be over. What time church is over? What time do we get out of here? Is that your attitude? should never be your attitude. Because every day I wake up, I, I get on sitting on the side of my bed. Before I eat my feet even hit the ground, I say, thank you, Lord. Because I know in today is new mercies and what? New grace. I know what happened yesterday, guess what? It's over. And I'm living in today. Somebody say amen. amen. Another thing that, that causes spiritual stagnation is lack of confidence. It's kind of have confidence when you're not living right. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You can fool me, you can fool everybody, but when, you, when you're not living right, you're not obeying the word of God, it's very difficult to have confidence. Somebody say amen. amen. It's very difficult to ask God to do something, amen, when you are living right. Can I get an amen? amen? Case in point, I was a child, you was a child. Whenever I did something wrong, it was very difficult for me to go to my mother and ask her for something. Because I didn't have the confidence. But when I obeyed her, when I cleaned my room, when I, when I, when I washed clothes,
lifestyle uh, that you used to, before you got saved. It's a sinful lifestyle. If you lie, cheat. It has consequences. Do you ever think about when you're ready to do something and you know that it's sinful, but yet, you know, the way I look at it, if something comes to my mind sinful, I always think about the what? Consequences. The effects it's going to have on me, the effects it's going to have on my wife, the effects it may have on my children, the effect it may have on my church, the effect it may, it may have on my life. But the biggest thing for me is being displeasing to God. I don't want to be displeasing to God. I want to obey God. I want to enjoy the blessings of God. Yes. And so I realize that a sign of spiritual uh, stagnation is also caused by sin. Yes. Another sign of uh, spiritual stagnation means you go to church. Listen, you go to church, you, 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 you do all the churchy stuff, but yet you don't feel that you're getting anything. You don't feel like you're growing. You don't feel like your life's going nowhere. And that's because most church folk don't understand life. You think that you got to always be doing something, and if you're not doing nothing, then God is not glorified. Let me tell you something. God wants you to enjoy life. God wants you to go on vacation. Tell your neighbor, go on vacation. God wants you to enjoy, go to the movies, go on date night, you know, go out to the restaurants and eat. The only thing is when God calls, he wants you to answer. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. When God calls, I drop what I have and whatever he tells me to do, guess what? I do it. But I don't pressure myself thinking I got to feed every hungry person and give money to every person got to sign up and say, hungry, need food. I only move when the Holy Spirit tells me. And when you start moving by the Holy Spirit, people will get angry with you. They don't understand. Their family members will desert you when they don't understand when you obey and live by what? The Holy Spirit. But spiritual stagnation means you can't even hear his voice. You don't even know when he's talking. So anything that you do is usually out of guilt. Trying to make yourself feel good. Guess what I did today? I gave some money to a homeless person. Okay. And? Guess what I did today? I went to the hospital to visit somebody. Okay. And? That's all good and well, but if God don't get no glory out of it, guess what it is? Just useless. You just did it because you thought it was the right thing to do. Sometimes you can go to the hospital at the wrong moment. And get your emotions all tied in. Spiritual stagnation is devastating to the body of Christ. I have been there. I have been in a place of spiritual stagnation. I didn't want to read my Bible. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to go to church. I, I didn't want to worship. I didn't want to hear any kind of songs at all. I was just going through the motions of church. I didn't have no relationship. I had this kind of relationship. It was, it was horizontal. Until I realized the most important thing, horizontal would never work if you don't have a vertical relationship working. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. If the vertical relationship is not in order, if God is not first, if God is, is not your groom, if God is, is not your God, then anything you do vertical is only temporary and is temporary satisfaction in life. Yeah. But when I'm connected vertical, everything horizontal lines up. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. My marriage lines up. Somebody say amen. Yeah. I get favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm able to, to go through crisis without falling apart. Woo. Spiritual stagnation will rob you of your very life. Church pastors getting in the podium, preaching the gospel. It's a job. It's not ministry. Being a pastor is not a job. It's ministry. If you, didn't get, if you didn't get any money, would you still do it? Would you still preach? Can we go to churches and preach the gospel and don't take an offering? Because if, it, if it's not about money, you don't, listen, if, it, if you don't make it about money, God will bring money. That's, 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 that's a gimme. 
but you make it about people, teaching people how to connect to who? God. Teaching you away from the church, away from the building, away from the deacons, away from the elders. Your relationship is with God. And when you're connected with God, guess what? Everything in your life should line up. Everything vertical should line up. It should be nothing out of whack. And if it is, the Holy Spirit will reveal that too. Trust. Spiritual stagnation calls you not to trust nobody, not even God. There's a lot of people that don't trust God. You know what I mean? What I mean by they don't trust God, you don't trust the word. You don't trust what the word says. You don't trust that God is able to bring you out your situation. So guess what? You got to find a human being to give you some kind of confidence. I don't need a human being to give me confidence. I have the word of God to give me my confidence. He filled me with his Holy Spirit. God's living where? Inside of me. Where's God living? Inside. God is living inside of you. People, can you get that? Your life should not be turmoil like the world. Your marriages should not be like the world. If you obey the word of God, you don't need a marriage conference to get your marriage right. If you obey the word of God, you don't have to go to a conference to get your marriage right. If you obey the word of God, you don't have to go see a, a psychiatrist. Because everything will line itself up when you start obeying what? The word of God. Another sign of spiritual stagnation is distractions. Distractions in life. Distractions in life. Things happen in life that distracts you and pulls you away from the things of God. Singles, meet somebody. Singles, meet a man or a woman, vice versa, whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden, you go into church. All of a sudden, you serving God. And all of a sudden, somebody come in your life. And guess what? All of a sudden, God becomes secondary. Oh, I notice people who come to church, and they come here, no job, no car. They catch the bus. And every time church doors open, they hear. They catch Metro, they walk, they walk the half a mile down to the church, or they, or they, or they catch the bus and they walk here. And they, they, every time the church door open, they're here. But as soon as they get a car, you don't see them no more. As soon as they get a job, now there's a lot of overtime to be made. Money becomes, becomes first, and now you can't even come to church no more. Distractions. All of us been there. Somebody say Hallelujah. The pain of forgiving is, is, can sometimes be very difficult to forgive after you've been wounded and hurt, after you've been put down and dragged through the mud. But guess what the Bible says? The Bible says forgive. And if you don't forgive, you cannot be what? I know it's painful, but let me tell you, if God tells you to forgive, don't you think he has the ability to heal your heart? Don't you think if he tells you to do something, he gives you the ability to love beyond your capability? Yeah. Why would he tell you to do something you weren't capable of? Mm. But because you won't obey his word, you stay stuck in that place. Spiritual stagnation keeps you stuck in a dark place. You can't even enjoy life. Nobody want to be around you. Because your life is just full of darkness. Because you refuse to obey and follow the word of God. Go to Matthew. We'll go through some scriptures right here right quick. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. We're going to read verse 53 to 58. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm so glad. I'm not, I'm not stuck in spiritual stagnation. I'm all, I'm, I am happy when I ain't doing nothing. I can sit in my garage. I usually open my garage door up and get a steward just sit there. Ain't nobody coming past. Ain't no, ain't no traffic. All I hear is a woodpecker banging on a tree. Or, or I'm just sitting there watching planes land in Andrew. And guess what? I'm happy. I mean, my life is full. I got a roof over my head. I want to go take me a hot shower. I just walk upstairs. Somebody say amen. amen. I want me some nice hot tea. You know, she taught me, taught, told me how to drink tea. My wife, she taught my wife, my wife taught me how to drink tea. Because I used to hate tea. And I, I get me a, a hot cup of tea, and I'll sit in my garage, and I just sit there and think about how good I have it. I got it good. Because I'm, I'm happy with my spiritual walk with God. We all make improvements every day. Somebody say amen. 
I'm making improvements every day. So look at Matthew 13, 50, 53 to 58. Look what he says. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed from there. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in the synagogues, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? How did he know this? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and where? In his own house. And he did not many, white, many mighty works there because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Unbelief, God can't work. You can pray till your eyes fall out your head. If I'm sick, listen to me, if I'm sick, this is what I don't understand about some, some people. Some, if you got cancer or something, I want everybody to know. Amen. You know why I want everybody to know? Because I want everybody praying. I want people calling my name out until they can't call it no more. That's right. I don't want no secrets. Because you're afraid because you got cancer. I'm ashamed when I got cancer. I ain't ashamed. If it happens, guess what? God is a healer. Yeah. The more people I get praying, the more people I get calling my name, boy, I know, boy, I'm in a good place. But God can't work in unbelief. Tell your neighbor, God can't work in unbelief. You sit there, standing there, complaining about your situation. It's spiritual stagnation. All you're doing is complaining and belly aching and getting mad at people. Guess what? Don't expect any change. What have I learned through the years? I learned when I found my, find myself in a place, guess what I do? I shout. Somebody say hallelujah. I worship. And the hardest place to do it is when you're going through pain, when you're going through situations, and you still can say, Father, I bless you. Father, I give you glory. Father, I honor you. Father, I, boy, that is faith in action. Even though I feel it, even though I sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's hard to get through. I've been praying and haven't seen any manifestation. And yet, inside of me, inside of my very soul, I bless God. Let me tell you something. Boy, I'm getting ready to come out of this thing. Because belief requires action. Tell your neighbor, belief requires action. If you are operating in spiritual um, stagnation means you are stagnant. Anything stagnant stinks. Come on now. Leave water yeah. in, a, in a bucket for days on end with nobody, nothing in it. You can even put palm olive in it. Just let it sit there a while. Over time, it's going to start what? Thinking. Anything stagnate either stinks or dies. That's why church folk, you see them for a minute, they come when everything's good. When things go bad, you don't see them. I mean, no, when things go good, you don't see them. And Jesus said that he couldn't operate, couldn't do mighty work there because of unbelief. So when you pray and nothing happens, sometimes it has to do with unbelief. God can't work in what? Unbelief. When you say you believe God, you got to walk through it. Somebody say Hallelujah. You just got to trust God and his word. Anybody, anybody here ever seen God? Can you tell you what color he is? Does it really matter? Can you tell me how big he is? The Bible says he's big enough to fill the universe and small enough to fit into your heart. That's pretty mighty. That's pretty strong there. And yet he cares about you. He cares about the very hairs on your head. He cares about when you go through stuff. But he cannot operate in what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Unbelief is nothing more than spiritual stagnation that puts you in a place, and anything stagnant does not move. Everybody understand? Yes. Does not move. Go to Matthew 17, 14. I'm going to walk you through this. Started 13. Then the disciples understood. He spake unto them, John the Baptist. Go down to um, 15. Lord, have mercy on my son. Boy, he's a lunatic. He got mental problems. 
And he's sore vexed. Oftentimes he falls into the fire and oftentimes into the water. I'm telling you, that gotta be, that gotta be, that gotta be the hardest thing for a parent. To have a child that's out that has mental issues. The church afraid to deal with it. You know why they're afraid to deal with it? Because they don't believe in casting out devils. They don't believe in laying hands on the sick. So I'm like the church is, is powerless. Only thing you get is good preaching. What about demonstration of the word of God? What about people that come mentally ill and God can instantly uh, cause their mind to come back? Amen. Why don't it happen? Unbelief. Why your situation ain't changed? Unbelief. I'll tell you in a minute how you can identify. I gave you some things right here. Identify unbelief. Unbelief is nothing more than spiritual stagnation. You know, you just don't believe God. You try with all your might to believe God. You can sit there and squint your eyes and you can grit your teeth. That ain't believing God. Believing God is moving when the odds are against you. It's trusting God when you're going through. It's trusting God when all you got in the house to eat is a can of beans and two hot dogs. And the hot dogs been sitting out and they old. But you still give them glory. Somebody say hallelujah. I give them glory. Y'all to give God glory right now. 16 said, and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him, couldn't heal him. Then Jesus said unto them, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring them unto me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. What did he do? And departed out, and departed out of him. The child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Do you really believe God? I know I'm going to heaven. I believe I'm going to heaven. I know if I, you know, I know I'm, I, I, the only thing I know, I know I'm going to die. But I know that I am not, I'm not going to die. I'm going to leave this physical earth, but the Bible promised me I'm going to live forever. And so I'm just transitioning out of one dimension into the next. So guess what? I live every day to the glory of God so I can go to that next dimension. But they couldn't do it because of what? Unbelief. He said, I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, just that small, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence from yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible for you. If you just what? Believe. God wouldn't tell you to do anything that he don't give you power to do. But you got to choose to do it. Tell you that, you got to choose to do it. You want God to do it for you. You want God to make you do it. If he make you do it, then he take responsibility. That's why he gave you the choice. That's why nothing can stand against us when we believe the word of God and stand on the word of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17. God can't work in unbelief. I used to pray in unbelief. I went to the hospital hoping something would happen. Because nobody taught me. Nobody taught me how to rejoice in the midst of it. Nobody taught me how to, how to walk through it. And trust God in his word. And, and in my mind, I know what I see. But in my spirit, I know that it's all done because he cannot do one thing. Go to Hebrew chapter 6. Verse 17 and 18. You need to get this into your spirit, not into your head. 17 says, wherefore God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutableness, immobility of his counsel confirmed it by what? An oath. An oath. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to do what? Lie. God to do what? Lie. God cannot what? Lie. God cannot what? Lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled from the refuge for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set what? Before us. God can't lie. That's all I know. God can't lie. I don't care what I feel. God can't lie. When my mother died, I knew God couldn't lie. I knew she transitioned into that other dimension. I was good. I didn't cry for her. I was, at, I was at that place of maturity where I began to understand that it was her time and she transitioned into a place where there's no sickness, there's no death, there's no bigotry, there's no hatred, there's none of that, and she's home with Jesus. I have this belief. I have this I have, this, I have this belief that when I speak God's word, stuff is happening. You can't see it, but I know it's happening. So I rejoice like it's already done. 
Because I believe God's word. God's word cannot, he cannot what? Lie. Lie. Y'all need to start living by God's word. You got a bad supervisor you're dealing with? Pray for him. I'm just giving you what the Bible says. I ain't making this up as I go. Somebody say hallelujah. Some of y'all, I can feel it in my spirit right now. Some of y'all dealing with some people on your job that give you the blues. And you ain't, you've been praying for them. Can I get an amen? And you ain't seen no change. Why? Spiritual stagnation. You ain't seen no change. It ain't going to change. They're gonna, just going to get worse through the day, through the week, through the year. Why? Until you start obeying what? Word of God. Here's, here's, here's something that's illogical for the natural man to even understand. The Bible says pray for your enemies. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible said pray for those that persecute you. Pray for those that say all oh, man are evil against you. When you start praying for them, God starts moving. He starts sending angels. And if God has to, he'll take that individual and move them out the way. Until you start believing the word, do not expect your situation to change. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm telling you, I had, I had a boss. He hated black people. He couldn't stand black people. And I'm, I wanted to do something physical. And my pastor at that time was talking about loving. And I was going like, love? I tell you, I tell you how to love. But then if I would have done something violent or I would have done something physical, how am I going to feed my family on the air? How am I going to have health insurance? Amen. So the Bible says pray for those that persecute you and say all the manner of evil against you. It said pray and believe God and his word. God said vengeance is mine, says the Lord, when you do it God's way. Amen. So I would go to work, and he would show up, and I know he liked coffee. I would go out and get coffee for everybody because I was a little guy on a toll pole, and I would always bring him a cup of coffee. And he said to me, I ain't asked you for no coffee. I said, I know you didn't, but I know you like it. Here, I brought you a cup. I put two creams and three sugars in it just like you like it. I did that for two years. He tried to fire me three times. He wrote me up the third time, and I got two weeks off without pay. At that time, I'm living check by check. I wonder how I'm going to feed my family. I'm off work two weeks. I don't have any money coming in. Savings? What savings? I ain't got no savings. I'm living check to check. My wife don't work. She's home taking care of the children. All I have is the word of God. I'm living by the word of God. It's painful to go to work and know this guy is always looking to do something to me. They gave me two weeks off without pay. He said that I left the job early. Well, all the white guys was doing it. And I left, I left, I was working way up in Dickerson, Maryland, off of 28. And I had to drive 50-something miles of work every day. And so I left and went to another station. He said that wasn't good enough. They gave me two weeks off without pay. I sat there, I could cry and bellyache, or I could believe God. So that's when I started practicing the scripture. I started praying for him and his family. I started praying for his children. I started praying that God, you would heal his heart, whatever's going on with him. Why is he so angry against me? And all of a sudden, God turned that thing around. I go before the Human Resources Board. And they asked me, why you leave early? I said, I didn't leave early. I said, everybody left their, 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 their side a place, and they would go somewhere else that was a little closer to get home. That's what I did. You know what? They gave me my time back, two weeks pay. Plus, they gave me back the overtime that I missed. Those were some pretty big, fat checks. I can now take care of my family, and guess what? I went out to dinner. Why? Because guess what? I was believing God at his what? Word. I, I, I almost fell into spiritual stagnation based on what, Pastor Cook? Based on fear. Somebody say hallelujah. Based on unbelief. Based on lack of confidence. Based on sin. Based on disobedience. Based on trust. Based on distraction. And based on forgiveness. Unforgiveness. And when he retired, he had his wife there. 
and his children there, and they had a big spread for him. And I went to it. And he walked over to me. And he said, Daniel, he said, I couldn't stand you. He said, and I tried my best to get you fired. I was trying to destroy you. He said, and every time I do something to you, he said, I want you, want you to know that I felt, I started feeling something really bad. He said, I know you're a Christian man, and whatever God you serve, I pray I find him for myself. The guy that tried to fire me, the guy that gave me two weeks off, is the same guy that came back and apologized. Why? Pray for your enemies. Pray for those that persecute you. Pray for family members that borrowed from you and didn't pay back. Pray for those you didn't help. Forgive them. I would give you the best advice I can give you when it comes to family. Don't ever give them nothing. Don't ever loan. Don't ever give them a loan. Give to them. Hallelujah. You don't have it to give. Don't give. Spiritual stagnation. Some of y'all in here in spiritual stagnation. You've been praying. Ain't nothing happened. It could be a job. It could be your family. Could be your even personal well-being. Could be somebody here with mental problems. God is a healer. When you start obeying the word of God, it has to produce. Come on, tell your neighbor. When you obey the word of God, it has to produce. Here's my last scripture. And I want you to get a hold of this. I don't have spiritual stagnation anymore in my life at all. I follow the scripture. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Somebody say amen. I believe in women preachers. I believe in men preachers. I believe that God will use whoever he will to carry out his, his, his word. I believe that God gives us power to cast out devils. I believe God lay on us power to heal the sick. I believe that with all my heart. Nobody going to change my mind because I believe the word of God. Here's my last scripture. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse what? 12. This is what I know about the word of God. It changed my life. It, 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 is, it is what gives me my insight to understanding the society we live in. Before I read that, listen to this. If this world is all you have, then black folks, you in trouble. If man came from an amoeba, and grew into a monkey. And a monkey developed into a human being. And man supposedly have evolved. My question to most people, even people I talk to, why aren't you still evolving? If man is, is say that everything happened from a big bang theory, and yet the sun rises up every day, the moon comes at night, the stars comes out, the water only comes up so far on the land. E everything seems to be in, in order. We have summer, uh, 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 winter, uh, fall, and we have spring. Uh, and they keep coming. Every year that I've been alive, these 64 years, every year, spring, summer, fall, and what's the other one? All happen. And yet, it, it keeps happening. Uh, how, how does that happen? Some Something with order had to put it in order. Why is it that people die then? Why is it that they die? Why is it that they live and they get old? How come we get wrinkles? How, how, how come our hair get gray? How, how, how come we, we, don't, we don't look like we look when we was in high school? How is it? Because when God spoke it, he told Adam, because of sin, Man going to die. And man been dying every what? Since. God told the moon and the sun to do their job. He told summer, winter, spring shall never cease as long as the earth remaineth, and it's still doing it. It's never going to stop. Because if it ever stops, then we all are stuck in this position that we're in. 
And so if this world is all we got, it's always going to be Europeans in charge. It's going to be hatred, bigotry, always going to be clawing at one another. You're going to work until your hands can't work no more. If that's all we have, we are hopeless. But thank God for the... Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house, there's many what? Mansions. He said, though you were dead, yet shall you live. So I got, I got proof right here. I understand death. It's coming. But I want it to come when I'm 110. And then when it comes, I just want to fade away. Somebody say, I just want to fade away. I just want to fade away. I just want to just slip away. You know, old folks say, slip away, slip away, just slip away. But here's the last scripture. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 said, for the word of God. Somebody say the word of God. The word of God. This is how you have to live. You do not live by people's opinion. You do, not, you do not live by personal prophecies of people. I don't look for a prophet to give me a prophecy. I got a whole bunch of prophecy right here. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm not looking to, to be big. I'm not looking to be the most influential. What I am looking for is to be the most impactful when it comes down to the kingdom of God. Amen. For the word of God is what? Quick. It means word quick in the Hebrew means alive. In the Greek means alive. It means what? Alive. The word of God is what? Alive. So when I live the word of God, it is active and is doing something. The Bible says when we obey the word of God in the name of Jesus, even demons bow their knees. Situation changes. Even if you can't see it, it's changing. And I start rejoicing. I don't see nothing. But I'm like the Hebrew boys. I live like the Hebrew boys. I live, and listen, I, my whole life is based on this, what they said. They said that I know God is what? Able. Come on. Everybody say, I know God is what? I, that's the part that most Christians live on. I know he able. I know he able. I don't live on that part. I live on the part if he don't. Amen. Somebody say, hallelujah. If he don't do it, I'm still going to worship him. Somebody say, hallelujah. If he don't do it, I'm still going to praise him. Somebody say, hallelujah. If I don't see the manifestation, I'm still going to stay caught. Somebody say, hallelujah. I live in if he don't, but I know he able. But if he don't, I don't lose focus. Because he has his reason for why he allowed things to go on sometimes, and I accept it. Because I know he knows what's right. So the Bible says, for the word of God is quick and is what? Sharper than what? Piercing even down to the dividing of the sunder and soul in what? Yeah. Of joints and marrows. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of what? The heart. Spiritual stagnation will rob you. And eventually you stay there long enough, you will die. You will leave church. There are people in church right now that don't believe God. They don't believe him. They hear the word in, in day in and day out. I have watched people come and people go. I have watched people give up on God and go back to their sin. I have watched people, because God didn't answer their prayers or they didn't see a manifestation, in a lot of cases, people aren't taught, taught how to really trust God when you don't see nothing, when nothing is not visible. We always are taught we got to see it. I ain't got to see nothing to believe it. All I know, I start rejoicing. Even if I don't see it, I'm rejoicing. Because I know God cannot what? Lie. Come on. You got to say, God cannot what? Lie. If God said it, the Bible says, Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If God said it, shall he not bring it to what? Pass. So if you're in stagnation, you can get out real quick. You can get out real quick. It don't take, you don't have to, you don't have to be spiritually spiritually strong and be in church a long time. All you have to do is obey. Tell your neighbor, all you got to do is obey. So what did I get rid of? The first thing, God has not given me the spirit of fear. Somebody tell your neighbor, God didn't give me the spirit of fear. So you tell your neighbor, I have a sound mind. You are not crazy. You are not crazy. I don't lack for confidence. 
because I live a life of repentance. I tell people all the time, repentance does not negate the fact of what you sowed. Repentance restores relationship with God. But the Bible says, whatever, whatever soul man soweth, that shall he also what? So sometimes you have to go through that process. But what's restored is guess what? Fellowship and relationship is restored. And now you can call God and God said, I'll have mercy on you. He said, I get you through what you're going to go through. Somebody said, hallelujah. Sin. Sin should not have dominion over you. I have power over sin. You got power over lust. Tell your neighbor, you got power over lust. Men, you got power over lust. Some people commit adultery in their minds. Hallelujah. You got power over it. You got power over sin. You got power not to hate. You got power to love because he gives you power over sin. You don't have to disobey. Disobedience is a choice. We choose to disobey. It's a choice. The devil don't make you disobey. He tempts you to disobey. But you choose not to because he don't control me. Somebody say hallelujah. So disobedience is a choice. Last one. Spiritual stagnation, how you get out of it? I trust God. I trust God. How do I trust him? At his what? At his what? At his word. That's all I have. I have his word right here. Read your Bibles every day. People ask me, how do you study? Read. That's all I'm going to tell you. Just read. That's all you got to do. Just read. And the Holy Spirit will bring revelation and understanding. Amen? So I want you guys to enjoy your day. But don't live in spiritual stagnation. I did it. And many preachers are doing it. Even some pastors I know today are in spiritual stagnation. It's a job to them. It's not a job to me. I care for your soul. You know why? Because God said I have to give an account on the day of judgment. That's why I told one guy, I said, you can't pastor your wife. He said, what? Nope. You can't pastor your wife. You know why? Because God has given their pastor the authority to watch for your soul. The husband can be the priest of his home, and he has to be. But the pastor is responsible for what he teaches and how he lives has the greatest impact in any ministry. That's why a pastor that can get up and sin and sleep with the women in this church and all he cares about is, is getting money, on the day of judgment, God's going to hold him accountable. Amen? So I thank God for today. Y'all ready to go into the next part of our service so we can let you go home? Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Are you free today? Free. Yeah, yeah. I ain't got no fear. I believe God's going to do some miraculous things in the coming month.